Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of barrel proof bourbons. And that would typically mean they're going to be really big, high strength, but not necessarily the case as James E. Pepper Decanter is going to prove today. Uh, this is fairly new to the market. Uh, price point on it is $60. It is their distillate because, you know, the James E. Pepper that we saw in previous years, a lot of that was sourced, uh, but this is theirs. It is uh, based, the decanter is based on one that they did in 1945. Uh, proof on it varies, but 105, no, 107.6 proof is this one. Now you might be asking, barrel proof, 107.6, how does that happen? Well, you go super low entry proof is what happens. So I'm guessing they went in 100 proof, maybe a smidge below that, kept it in a very, very, probably cool part of the warehouse. Uh, because the average age of this bourbon is five and a half years old, meaning some of it could be older, some of it could be a little younger, but five and a half years on average. Super low entry uh, is going to pretty much equal a lot more flavor. Uh, as we know from old wild turkeys, you know, they used to go in very low proof, slowly work their way up into entry proofs, and uh, their flavors kind of slowly changed. We'll say it like that. It's changed a little bit. Not meaning they can't do great stuff, but usually charge for that. All right. James E. Pepper, $60, 107.6 proof. From there, we're going to go to the ASW Fiddler, the Georgia Heartwood. Now, the Georgia Heartwood uh, is called that because they are basically kind of charring some heartwood of the white oak stave. Uh, well, white oak chunks. They get big chunks of white oak, kind of take the hearts out of that char those little pieces up and put them in barrels kind of makers 46 style uh, but that's what they're doing here this happens to be a single barrel uh, that i picked up in florida fairly recently 116.2 uh, proof uh, this one is 45 percent wheat 51 percent corn and four percent barley all right and the finish part of this only happens for a few months so for the first part, it's just going to go into charred American oak barrels. But then for the final few months, they're going to take those chunks that are charred, put them in there, and bottle it for $95. All right. Now, let's go ahead and get back on the James E. Pepper. Again, their distillate, five and a half years old, 107.6 proof on the nose. Beautiful caramel brown sugar hybrid there, a combination. It's got a lot going on. It's got fruit and floral on the nose. A little bit of sour cherry. Plums, sour cherries. You could talk me into a little bit of baked apple. But the sour cherry is dominant. The fruit, I was, I'm was i sorry, the, the floral that I was picking up is like a little bit of rose water on the nose. But there's a lot of citrus in here as well. Orange zest. Mostly that's what that is. Maybe a little lemon twist, but that's it. Lots of oak on the nose, which is a little surprising giving the, you know, fairly youthful bourbon at five and a half years. But a good amount of oak, but everything seems really round and balanced. There might even, yeah, round and balanced. Okay. To the taste on the James E. Pepper decanter. And by the way, this bottle looks like it's taken a beating, which it has, but I've been sharing this with a lot of friends. Everybody's been really loving it, usually going second pours on it. And so this has only been opened for two going on three weeks. All right. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. Caramel brown sugar rich sweet oak those are the two dominant things i'm picking up and then you start going into right away you go into that kind of sour cherry baked plums baked apples that's right there in the beginning leads up into like a little cinnamon baking spices a little little smidge of nutmeg smidge of clove 
cocoa powder dusting on the back end, but not a lot because it's not going into like super dry or anything like that. When it gets onto the back end, you pick up a little bit of like a lightly worn leather, that little coffee in with the cocoa, coffee bean in with that cocoa, and that rich resinous oak is still running. It's, it's fairly complex, but it's also really nice and round, so I like that about it. It's nothing really poking out or, you know, it's too much of this, too much of that. It's a drinker. At 107.6, it's really, really nicely done at $60. Nice little barrel char lingering on the finish here. All right. Little double rinse. Going into the ASW Fiddler, Georgia Heartwood. Now, again, I think I, yeah, I've talked about what's going on with the stave additions. And when I nose this one, if you're familiar with that type of character, you're going to pick it out. You're, you're going to tell there's something else going on besides bourbon barrel maturation, right? Just the typical bourbon barrel maturation. There's something else going on. And it, your, your mind will lead you right away to a double barrel. But then if you nose it and you're familiar, you'll pick up a little bit of that kind of it's not new oak, but it's a more of a slightly raw oak than a barrel will typically give you. That's now that said, I'm not saying this that's the, those are negatives. I'm just telling you that's what something something's going on that makes me feel like that on the nose. All right. So big burnt brown sugar It's super dense. It's got clove. It's got a little bit of like almost like a mesquite uh, smoke to it. Even though it's not mesquite that they were putting. It was um, charred Georgia white oak. It is really nice on the polish. There's a lot of like mahogany polish. Sour. I would call this one again... This one had like a little sour cherry, but this one has like really sour cherry, but not a lot of it. It's just covered up by all that intense darkness that this one has. It's a very brooding bourbon. When I get out of the glass and I first go back into it, I can pick up a little of the orange zest in there. But then it just, your nose, it just gets overwhelmed by all the charred aspect and the heavy notes. I will say that this single barrel, and that's again, that's the kind of the good and bad of single barrels. You can have great ones and you can have just okay good ones. Uh, this would, I would call this one a good one. It's just I wish it was a little more fruit forward. There is a little cedar in with that oak, but... That's about it on the nose. Not super complex. All right, here we go on the palette. That's a lot of flavor. And it doesn't drink its proof. 116.2. I would say this one drinks about 108, 110. Big brown sugar, burnt brown sugar, heading into molasses up front. Dark, heavy oak. Really old, worn leather. A little bit of a walnut in here. In with all that kind of really sour cherry that's again it's I say that but you're not going to sit there and just get overwhelmed with that it's just when you pick up the fruit that's what the fruit is in here it's it's again it's lighter on the lighter spectrum there again that got that little whisper of that little orange zest in there but the thing I like about this one the mahogany polish on the back end I really like that when those fruits, that, again, that sour cherry goes into almost a polished tone. 
I love that. I do actually do like that kind of mesquite smoke aspect that this one has. I kind of like that. It's kind of cool. It's different in the background. Overall, it's soft, rich, dense. You do get a little bit of barnyard essence to this because there is a little straw hay in there, damp, really light. Again, barnyard always means a little bit of manure in the air. Again, I like to tell people it's kind of like when you're at the rodeo and you pick up the straw and you pick up the confectionery, you know, funnel cakes and all that, but there is manure involved. And it's kind of like this. I like that about it. Overall, I really enjoy it. $95, so $100 out the door. It's a little rough. I wish this one was $80. I'd probably be okay with a $79.99 price point. But hopefully you can see this locally uh, around you, maybe not at Total Wine. Hopefully you can get it for $80. I think that's a really solid price, and you're not going to get a big, flavorful bourbon that doesn't drink hot or anything like that. It's dark and dense. At least this single barrel was uh, near you for hopefully around $80. It's going to be fantastic. Now, if you can't see that and you just want a really nice drinker that's, again, big and round, but a, a soft little pillow, James E. Pepper. Uh, but if you like this kind of video content that's straightforward and honest, please consider joining us over at patreon.com slash liquorhound. That's how I'm able to self-fund these bottles because I'm not beholden any corporations or distilleries. I'm not asking them for bottles. And so... If you want to support this channel, join us over there. Uh, but regardless of platform, whether you're there or here on YouTube, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Keep leaving all those great comments. I'll get back to them just as soon as I can. Everyone have a great day and cheers.